All right, so I'm going to go out on a limb here, a very sturdy limb. If you are a woman between the age of, let's say, oh, I don't know, 35 to 40, chances are you were once really into these boys right here. Not all the girls, but a lot of them. New kids on the block. Step by step, ooh, baby, gonna get to you, girl. As Diablo Cody, the screenwriter of Juno, once put it, the new kids may have single-handedly triggered the onset of puberty in some people. <laughs> Now, for many of you, your favorite new kid was uh, this guy right here, Jordan Knight. Jordan was a pretty normal kid. I grew up in an Irish Catholic hood in Boston, attended a high school in an African-American neighborhood, went to church, liked hockey, break dancing. But life at home was hardly run of the mill. His folks ran what was essentially a foster home, but not just for kids, for people who couldn't take care of themselves. Jordan grew up with them, and you gotta think that had an impact on the rest of his life. Now, when he was in grade eight, he joined what would become New Kids on the Block, and we all know they became huge. More than 80 million records sold, 10 top 20 hits. Uh, lots of haters, no doubt. Allegations of lip syncing, lawsuits, and crazy rumors. They said you had a sex change or something like that. What is that? <laughs> so, how'd they keep from losing it? How'd they keep from getting done in? Well, we'll find out. In the end, with rap and grunge on the rise, the New Kids disappeared from view. We do it our way. Who gives a damn about what critics say? Jordan lost his way a bit, says he hit his own rock bottom. Now Jordan's back on the block and reunited with the new kids, and they're set to launch another tour. He started a family, and he's refocused on his solo career, carving out a new life with and without the new kids. Tell me love me, girl. Please welcome Jordan Knight! <laughs> How are you, bud? Very good, thank you. Thanks for having me. What's going on? Nothing much. Wow, I just walked in, I'm like, oh my goodness. This is you the got, show. You got it going on yeah, in here, people man. Are, people are excited to see you. I love they it, are. I love it. A New Kids Backstreet Boys tour is like the Beatles and Stones together for that genre of music, <laughs> right? For that genre, well, how does that happen? It was, it was well, we did a show together. Uh, we did a performance together, uh, impromptu, and we did it at Radio City Music Hall, and, um, we were trying to make a splash for the end of one of our tours, and we, we were at Radio City Music Hall, and we were like, who's in town? Uh, this one, that one, hmm. The Backstreet Boys, Backstreet Boys are in town. That's interesting. Had you had relations with, relationships with them before? Did you guys know, were you friends? Was it a rivalry? Um, no, it was never a rivalry, because they came a little later. Um, it was, it was kind of like they were kind of an ode to us. It was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Saying that, no, seriously, saying, <laughs> I didn't find the right word. <laughs> and oh, it, it was complimentary. Uh, yeah, um, no, no, seriously, seriously. <laughs> foot in mouth. Um, I don't think it was. I don't think it was a foot in mouth. I think you're right. I think that's what it was. It was an homage to what you guys had done first. It was. It was. It was for sure. Uh, <laughs> but listen. Seriously, not to, seriously, the, the Backstreet Boys, <laughs> the Backstreet Boys are talent. We wouldn't want to go on tour and co-headline with them if we didn't really respect them and vice versa. People today have this sort of distrust of the process of a pop band or a rock band because they actually do think everything is so manufactured now. But when you guys first started, I don't think people realize just how unmanufactured it was in the very beginning, right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, a lot, a, a lot of times, like, um, People, people don't know, they think, you know, we were like told what to wear and all that kind of stuff and you sing this note and you don't say that and blah, blah, blah. Like there was some panel that told us what to do, but, um, you know, we were very, very organic. Um, you know, we did have a producer. We, we worked really well with our producer, Maury Starr. Um, he really fed off of us and he knew, he knew we were the demographic. He knew, you know, I should be producing music that they like and that they feel is good for their fans. And, um, you know, we would, uh, we, we lived in the studio. Was Donnie the guy that was bringing everybody together in the beginning in the, in the hallways of the school? Like, how did that whole thing start? If it was organic, what was the, ne the, the, the beginning of that? Um, we all went to elementary school together besides Joe. He was too young, right? He was too young, yeah, and he, and he lived in a different part of the city. Um, but um, I sang in the chorus, um, and, and Donnie, uh, we kind of parted ways after we went to middle school. And then when, and then when Donnie met Maurice, I guess Donnie was thinking, like, man, 
remember Jordan from uh, from, the, from you know from school. He was always singing in the chorus, and he was the lead the lead chorister or whatever. So he called me. He was going to school uh, at another school, and my my older brother went to school with him. And my older brother's like, "Hey, Donnie wants to call you uh, for something." <laughs> He said some group, some singing thing, whatever. <laughs> and then, you know, the phone rang. <clears throat> he was like, hey, what's up, man? Hey, what's going on? <laughs> 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 he was like, dude, yo, I got a... <laughs> <laughs> I'm in this group, right? I was like, yeah, who's in the group? Just me. Uh... <laughs> But, you know, we're putting it together, and uh, it's like the real do. You know New Edition? Yeah, New Edition, yeah. They were a group that came before us, produced by the same producer. Um, he was like, yeah, Maurice Starr, who produced them, um, he wants to, like, do a group, man, like, like, like five white boys, man, like... <laughs> like New Edition, but five white boys. I was like, well, I fit the criteria of that, I guess. <laughs> um, <laughs> No, and he's like, he's like, seriously, this is no, uh, you know, this isn't like church choir, this isn't like school chorus, this is the real deal. I was like, all right. Um, so, you know, I went to, uh, went to try out, and uh, he picked me up with our then manager, and we went to try out. Maurice, Maurice heard me sing a couple notes. I don't even know how impressed he was, but he was like, yeah, all right, you're in. Just like that. That easy, yeah. Um, it's incredible, like, how... how your life changed, how pop music changed, how everything changes with something as simple as, yeah, you're in. I know, and, and so, so cool, it's crazy. Like, you know, you have to work hard, but there is an element of luck. You know, they say the harder you work, the luckier you get, and I believe that's true. You know, when that explosion <clears throat> hit, when you guys became so huge, how did you handle it versus how some of the other guys did? I, um, I handled it, um, I kind of, you know, I tend to go into a shell, so um, the, the good thing about us is that, you know, we had each other. We, uh, we had somebody right next to us that was going through the exact same thing. So, you know, I think a lot, of, a lot of times when you see stars out there, a lot of them are solo stars that get in trouble uh, or, you know, start <clears throat> messing up and taking drugs and stuff like that um, because they're doing it alone. I, th I think part of the reason you might be able to handle some of that stuff is because of your upbringing. I think if people don't really know that you're essentially you're in a foster home, but it was your mom. Like it wasn't like you were in a foster home, but you were in this home that people were coming in and out of all the time. Right. Um, I was the youngest of six kids, and um, there was usually around four or five foster kids that. Um, uh, so all of us would be would be there together. Um, I think, you know, there was uh, mentally ill people in my home. There was elderly people in my home that my mom took care of. One of the guys that was basically part of your extended family was an African American kid, right? And Boston's a notoriously racist town. Did you ever yeah. experience any of that? My brother is black. Yeah. 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 Um, and um, yeah, I mean, so, yeah, we experienced racism. Uh, we we would go to uh, you know an ice rink, and my parents were, uh, you know, they didn't care. We we're going to South Boston to skate, and we we're bringing Chris. Uh, we'd come out, and our tires be slashed, um, and uh, that. Uh, how old were you? I was about 10, 11. It's quite a place to be for a kid. How's your mother explain that to you? Um, I think she didn't really have to explain because we knew that the racism, because we li I lived in such in a house that was diverse. Um, no one had to explain. I didn't have to know that <laughs> there's no difference. Yeah. I didn't have to know. I knew it. I didn't have to be taught it. It's an interesting place to be as a musician because you get out there and you're, you're able to expose what you believe in to other people. Did you ever feel like going on stage and talking about it? And I know you have talked no. in your private life about it. No, as you see, it's a little difficult for me to talk about, so I don't talk about it much. I want to go back to something in the late 80s, 1989, a Boston TV interview. Take a look at this. Do you um, think you'd ever split up or anything? Do a Bobby Not, Brown. Well, for today with New Kids on the Block, right. you never know what's going well, to go. Well, our group, you know, it's it's best that we stick together because it's it's the combined thing that makes us work so good. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. everyone's different, and that makes us so good. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's too hard and to it, tell. If one person leaves the group, I think it would never be the same. So right. we're going to stick together. There you go. <laughs> WBZ TV. That um. 
Is that? It looks like Tom Bergeron from Dancing with the Stars. It is. That's him. <laughs> yeah. In the late 80s, his TV show yeah. in Boston. <laughs> right, right. He's a Boston guy. Yeah. We saw him when we did Dance with the Stars with the Backstreet Boys. Uh, we, were, we were talking about that, actually. And uh, the little kid, that's my nephew. Yeah, Matt. Yeah. All right, stick around. We're going to have Anthropology with Jordan right after this. How do you feel? When girls throw bras on stage. Yeah, it feels pretty good to know that all the girls across the country uh, want to rip my clothes off. But uh, sometimes it gets to be a bit annoying when they throw quarters at my head. I mean, what do you do with all the, the great uh, gifts and little uh, knickknacks that they present you with? Well, the bras I give to my mom. <laughs> <laughs> Nineteen eighty-nine. Kids, kids say the darndest things. <laughs> they sure do. They sure do. All right, so you uh, you judge Cover Me Canada. What was your favorite Canadian song? Hallelujah. It's a great song, isn't it? Yeah, it's a great song. It's a great song, and when people do it right, it's even better. It's, are there songs that are just so powerful that you, a singer shouldn't even go near? That song is very powerful. Um, but yeah, there are some songs, you know, um, speaking of that, I just tweeted something about that the other day. Uh, Whitney Houston, God rest his soul, um, <clears throat> everybody's singing Whitney Houston songs now, and it's just reminding everybody how great she was because nobody can touch it. Nobody can touch her performances. How did you guys not implode, or did you and we just didn't hear about it? Because Whitney, and you're talking about New Edition, right? Bobby Brown, like, some of the great greats get done in by yeah. choices, mental illness, addiction, whatever it is. How did that not happen to you? I think it's, I really think it's, it's being in a group. I think it's having big families. I think it's uh, the company you keep. When you're a celebrity, people want a piece of you, you know? Uh, and that's it. People just want to take a chunk out of you. Like, uh, going back to it, Whitney Houston, She's walking around for a week, you know, drinking and boozing it up and partying, and like, why didn't somebody grab her and shake her and take her away? It's hard to, right? Did you, I guess it's hard to. But yeah. I, I'm not saying that they shouldn't have. Were there people who pulled you aside and said, listen, too far? Um, well, I pulled myself aside. Did you? Yeah, a lot of, pe a lot of people are like, man, like I, used, I, I was addicted to alcohol, and um, <clears throat> It got so, uh, I had such a bad hangover that I said, I gotta stop this, this is crazy. A lot of people are like, you're so strong, you have so much willpower, and that's great. I'm like, it wasn't willpower, it was pain, it was hurt. <laughs> that's what they say, you gotta, you gotta hit your bottom. Right. Um, so the bottom is, you know, you could uh, have a lot of pain, you could be kicked out the house, you could be, uh, have all your friends sit you down and say, if you don't change, uh, these are the consequences. Um, so if you don't have those friends to do that, or family, um, you're gonna be in trouble. And you think that's what happened to Whitney? I think that's what happened to Whitney, yeah. You must be in a pretty good space now, though, aren't you? Yes, yeah. I am, I am. Um, uh, doing, doing the whole reunion has uh, brought new, new joy. Um, People say, like, you know, are you, will you ever go through a midlife crisis? I'm, the, the reunion solved that. I mean, <laughs> you know, coming back with the new kids. Hey, man, I'm young again. Uh, so, uh, so um, that and uh, doing the doing the solo record. You know, uh, having a great family, two kids and a wife. Uh, you know, it's just life is good. When you were young, you couldn't. I mean, you had to be everybody's boyfriend. You had to be the guy, right? True. Yeah, yeah. I kind of, we kind of still have a little, you know, thing. <laughs> I can imagine that at some point that was exciting, and then at some point that became a really interesting prison to be in. No, I like it. <laughs> it's still fun. Well, dude, I imagine your brother would have struggled with it. You know, when you, when he had to come out of the closet, all of that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, that's tough. I was talking about that today. Um, yeah. I, um, it must have been tough. I mean, back then, like now, everybody, like he's he's out with it, and um, he's he's always been fine with it. But he would just be like, 
why do I have to shout out I'm gay to the world? It's it's my business. Yeah, well, he was out to, to yeah, you. Yeah, right, yeah. To, to, to us. Um, so, uh, yeah, but I'm like, sometimes I'm like, John, how do you get motivated before a show? Like, you know, you, don't, you look in the crowd and, you know, it's not a lot of guys out there. <laughs> what would he say? <laughs> he was like, I don't know, I just, you know, just have fun and... <laughs> Unfinished is the most recent uh, of his solo records, and of course you can see him as he plays his shows. It's real good to see him, man. Yeah, good to see you. Thank you so much. Good night, everybody. We'll be right back.